Hey everybody, wanted to start out this week with a quick shout out for our newest Patreon supporter, Jason Carey. Get used to the name, you're going to be hearing it a lot, joining the Council of Elders in our Patreon group. Jason, thank you so much, we're so stoked to have you, and thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, but for right now, let's just get into the episode. Wait, what was it now? <laughs> Zombies, aliens, and vampires, and lions, and tigers, and bears, oh my, Pat, it is... Closing in on Halloween at this point, I am probably on my way to St. Louis to move across the country, back across the country to North Carolina. It's Halloween. We're talking about vampires. We're talking about Fallout Boy. We are backlogging episodes as if we we're preparing for a zombie apocalypse. So in a way, it's <laughs> Halloween-y. In the way you're preparing for a big move, we got beans and rice and plenty of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of episodes just in case the, the internet goes out. So in a way, it's apocalyptic the way we're handling this next month or so of shows. Uh, uh, our current <laughs> events that we reference are going to be woefully dated by this particular <laughs> episode's air date. Um, but there will be a couple drafts coming uh, and a couple more uh, more after that. But I hope your drive is going well, buddy. And uh, <laughs> happy Halloween, everybody. It's, uh, it's already starting to feel like fall here in central, here in the triad Piedmont region of North Carolina, uh, some cooler air at the time of recording. I guess the election will not have happened or anything. So really, who the hell knows? But <laughs> zombies, aliens, vampires specifically for this week. If we're, is it one of those like pop-up screens where we have to pick one? Because it's vampires. This is mid <laughs> pre-2000s vampire craze. I'm not really sure. Oh, I think it might have been. I, well, no. Because... I, I don't know. Did Fall Out Boy start the vampire craze? <laughs> Does Twilight happen without Fall Out Boy and Pete Wentz? <laughs> if I'm a record exec for Hot Topic, who owns all the record companies, it was this is our <laughs> fake evil corporate person that we've created on this show in the 2000s. <laughs> the CEO of Hot Topic was also ran all the record labels at the time. The few, he was just like, you know what? What's one of our little itty bitty branch ones fueled by ramen? Yes, yes. They're doing Twilights. Get Pete Wentz in a fucking vampire music video <laughs> now. And uh, that's basically what, what happened. That's how I'd like to believe this unfolded. And they said, you know what? Make it a long one. I don't even care if it's the hit off the album from Under the Cork Tree. We're making a fucking killing off that album. Put the rest of the whole freaking fueled by ramen booklet on the fucking video. Academy is. Throw them in there. Gym class heroes, get them the f in there. Brennan Panic Uri. The disco. Put them in there. Are they all vampires? Kind of. We got enough bowler hats to make it work. And it's how long do you want it to be? Eight minutes. I don't f -ing care. But the budget's still very low for the video. Oh my God. I'm excited. This is our second week in a row of crazy long videos where it's almost more yeah. video than music. We got to do a draft, man. I don't know. <laughs> too much to break we gotta do a draft just where it's mostly us yelling at each other and picking stuff um because uh, there's almost <laughs> this shows how attention spans perhaps have shifted but it's like oh, who has seven minutes anymore man no, i'm just <laughs> i'm just kidding it's a really it's a really fun music video and sleeper pick for one of the best songs on from under the court tree oh. is is an opinion i think we both uh, flirt with a, a touch it's super good it's super good so Fall Out Boy. A little less. A little less, well, let's say candles. the name of the song. A little yeah, less 16 candles. A little candles. more touch me. A little more touch me. Let's do it. Let's start the show. What is going on, everybody? I'm Tom. And I'm Pat. We're best friends, and you're listening to the Reminiscent Podcast. A very Fall Out Boy song title. Jesus Which just gets you excited. <laughs> right. Yeah, dude. <laughs> My first thought was like, how am I going to fit this whole title onto the little graphic we make every week? It's so fucking long. <laughs> Is that the main reason we haven't done the From Under the Cork Tree uh, <laughs> album episode yet? Because the show notes would be freaking, you'd be writing a small novel. You'd basically get halfway through Infinite Jest writing out those show notes, I think. <laughs> Just a little DFW humor for you. And I'm not talking about the airport in Dallas. Okay. Um... <laughs> Man, uh, well, let's let's start here. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween. There's some vampires. They're up on a hill. They're in a car. I'm jumping right past the fast facts. I'm 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 realizing. So let's take it back a little bit before I ruin. No, please just don't. About I have none. <laughs> I, oh. for, I forgot. 
I Tom's uh, moving. There's other stuff in his life that's happening that we have not announced <laughs> on the show yet. It's just a heavy time. So let's just get to the fun stuff. Huh? <laughs> Who here wants to have some fun? Let's pretend like we're talking to everybody like we're at a kid's birthday party <laughs> and we're bad at our jobs, which is true anyhow. So this will be easy for us. Um, <laughs> just, you know, we flamed Billy Joe's teeth so hard last week that it's time... <laughs> We got to eat, eat a little crow on this one, I think, because uh, who the hell are we? I, I, I think is the, the main, the main uh, takeaway. Um, Fall Out Boy presents very old 80s, maybe 60s era horror movie, Swamp Thing like font or, you know, maybe something, but like, you know, you're overlooking the city, Hollywood Hills, suburban thrills, who are we kidding, et cetera, et cetera. I'd say that's the wrong band, but Academy is, is in this music video. So it's all in play. It's all in play. Uh, Kids, <laughs> teens making out in a car, what could go wrong? Uh, right. Demented humanoids begin to pester the young couple who are just trying to have a nice smooch sesh. Um, they're stopped, the humanoids, that is, by a group of, quote, hunters, Patrick Stump, lead singer on Fall Out Boy and company, and a very pointy-teethed Pete Wentz. Did you know, Tom, right off the bat that this was a vampire thing, or did, did it take you a minute? Well, it took me a couple of times a to also realize that Pete Wentz is not only a vampire, but also a vampire hunter, it seems like. So, yeah, there's a there's a little a little skerfuffle, a little debacle. A couple of the vamps put their uh, put their hands through the window, breaking into the back window for some reason where I believe no one even is keeping the actors safe. And um, Patrick Stump fails to contain them. And Pete Wentz comes in and kind of saves the day right is that a yeah from start to finish he's just throwing throwing fucking haymakers man <laughs> there are punch sound effects kick sound effects throwing throwing bows going hard in the motherfucking paint if you will uh pete wentz is you know i guess at the height of his sex symbolness if oh, you will yeah oh yeah so he's got the the bangs coming out of the hoodie that's thin, not there for warmth. <laughs> you know how people would wear hoodies that wouldn't keep you warm? There'd be holes in the fucking sleeves. And, you know, it was mostly meant to fit around your head in a way that your hair pe- peaked out. <laughs> well, anyone trying to imitate that look was imitating Pete in this video to a T. And he was pulling it the fuck off. I think we should just have to say it. Uh, but then he looks right at Patrick and says, you call yourself hunters? It's like, oh, shit, what the <laughs> fuck is this? How long is this video? You know, we have six and a half more minutes to go. This is about to get, turn <laughs> it's up like a mother- two and a half <laughs> minute song. Man. I know. <laughs> and okay. So I, I do want to say he, he could not have sounded any more cool when he said that you call yourself hunters. <laughs> and then he jumps off the cliff. Like <laughs> so like daintily. And it's so perfect. Like he's just going to fly to, Oh my God, man, this, this video yeah. comes out of the gate. Like Kate Beckinsale so in Underworld's just going to come out of nowhere in leather pants and whoop the <laughs> shit out of him too. It's like, there's fighting everywhere. Lichens and shit. I don't know what a lichen is, but I know it's involved in this universe. I'm pretty sure. It's like Lord of the Rings was just becoming a thing. So in like Twilight was just like the next 15 years was going to be fantastical as shit as far as movies go. We just didn't know it yet. So it's just like, it's all going to be creatures for like decades from now. It's just creatures. Bitch. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, the drummer looks at Pat. I think it's the drummer. He says, "Next time you be the bait," because he was sitting in the car pretending to make out with the girl. We find, right. where, you know, I, the the people come, the vampires were coming to uh, to pray, as it were. They get back to the lab, kind of a Ghostbustersy little lounge, and then Patrick Stump is doing some journaling. Before we get into the music video further, though, I'd like to touch on the fact that in the Chicago scene, when you listen to uh, interviews on podcasts with Patrick Stump. He had started the band as like a joke, not a joke maybe, but he's like, yeah, I'm leaning into a very like poppy punk, like, you know, more of a romantic, like songs about relationships type band. And Pete was not in it at first. They were all in different bands in that Chicago scene, I think as the story goes, but kind of Fall Out Boy popped for whatever reason. I guess the reason being that they're fucking great, obviously, <laughs> right. but um, kind of early on, Patrick just wanted to, like he enjoyed the producing aspect and finding melodies and songwriting and kind of early on, it was like, oh, Pete will be our heartthrob. And he plays that role, obviously, in this video. And it's interesting to watch, I guess, Patrick Stump, if we're doing a Ghostbusters comp, like Patrick Stump play the Harold Ramis and Pete Wentz play the Bill Murray character. I guess not that Bill Murray was like a sex symbol necessarily um, in the way that Pete was, but 
you know, the dynamic of that, like I'm the nerd and he's the struggling vampire heartthrob that like is going against his own kind to hunt. And, um, but he's journaling in the video. We first see the unraveling. I've watched him change. And Pete's just like sloshing around like a blood smoothie or something. And he's just like full of garlic and yeah. 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 Trying to like keep down his vamp, vampristic urges. What the (laughs) fuck? That's not definitely not a thing. But he's sloppily eating, you know, the, the blood smoothie, blood and garlic smoothies going everywhere all over his face and shit. Uh, his teeth are comically large. But the band has a, uh, especially the music videos coming off this album, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this, but they are a lot, like, we always credit Gerard Way and all them for being like, they build this world building, this world right. building. They create some pretty interesting, I don't know about worlds, but like the dance dance music video, the high school dance stuff. Um, you know, one night could make it happen. It could all change type stuff, like kind of theatrical almost, but funny, kind of campy thoughts on Fall Out Boy's sense of humor overall. Yeah, I think it, maybe we, I mean, My Chemical Romance gets just as much credit as they deserve. If not, maybe they deserve a little bit more. Maybe we're leaving Fall Out Boy out because we did the Sugar We're Going Down video and it's really good. Like you said, it's a, it's a little goofy and it's. It's not goofy in the way that pop punk like tried to be for a long time. It's right done with some taste and some effort at least. And right, like we talk about the fart punk, and what we mean by that is that era of newfound glory, Blink One Eighty Two, Sum Forty One kind of humor. Not that, and those are music videos that we still very much love. But there was oh, um, yeah. almost a theater, a theater kid element to um, to later efforts. Yeah, o- o- almost every video off of from Under the Cork Tree and <laughs> and you know, into the future, arms yeah. race, shit like that, like follow up boy, just, there was a whole, like, not that they were acting Hollywood, but like for a, a side project that started off tongue in cheek, they definitely acted like the part from the jump. Cause we, we were talking about the way they perform in that sugar. We're going down video, even grand theft autumn, they behave like they belong. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, they're just, it, it Pete Wentz is Pete Wentz before he joined Fall Out Boy, it almost seems like, you know what I mean? Like there was just kind of like this lore almost like, like, yeah, oh, that dude's cool as f-. He's actually a pretty good soccer player too. <laughs> I, I do think the dynamic of the band is so fascinating because like in what other band would the lead singer be okay? Like taking the backseat, like it reminds me of that Scrubs, that moment where, <laughs> where jd's like oh come on i'm the sidekick of my own fantasy <laughs> like, yeah at least and, you're not albert yeah, it's like, damn, damn you, you sir <laughs> like, <laughs> when you edit it make sure you say the line because sorry I, I was harshing on your mellow there <laughs> uh but you know i i think it's like really really interesting that he's just okay being or not being the well the it might guy, speak to the right? fact that you know, we talk about yellow card breaking up and just being like, we're not even going to do a reunion until like it's over. You know, you talk about band relationships that haven't gone great. Paramore right. comes to mind. Right. Gen Y's Fleetwood Mac. We say it all the time <laughs> on the show. We're just going to speak that shit right into existence. Um, there's a lot of parallels. That's for a different episode. Sorry. When you edit out that burp, you're going to be mad at me and I'm sorry. Um, speaking of sorry, drop it. I'm sorry. Like you're still around. One of the first few lines. The dramatic, almost diary, I guess, journaly nature of some of these lyrics on this album. Did you love From Under the Quirk Tree right away? Or I did. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we were both kind of on the same step at this point in high school, basically sharing iTunes libraries and stuff. So I was pretty sure I knew the answer <laughs> to that. But. Right. Yeah. So I, you know, I was kind of exploring the lyrics of this song because, again, I don't really listen that much. But I mean, the first couple things that we hear is he's already apologizing. I messed up dropping. I'm sorry. Like you're still around. So like, even though the girl's gone, he's still. Well, it's like saying drop I'm it. I'm sorry. As if you're even still around. Well, he's you know he says I mean? dropping. Like, like I'm saying, oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. So that changes it entirely. <laughs> I thought he was saying, hey, drop it. I'm sorry. Like you're even still around anymore, man. Close you know enough. I mean? like, Close uh, enough. But well, no, it's different because if it's dropping, I'm sorry. Like you're still around. Like I'm hopelessly letting you know I'm apologetic as if you're still <laughs> hanging out because I'm that desperate. So I think it changes the line entirely. Um, and I actually, my world's being shattered and I'm not going to ramble through it. I'm just going to let you talk again, but shit, that changes a lot for me because I had perceived it as, Hey, drop it. I'm sorry. As if you're even still around, like he had some ground to stand on, but it sounds like he doesn't. <laughs> so, okay. First of all, 
the name we got to reference that before we get too far a little less 16 candles a little more touch me so the original name of this song was going to be a little less molly ringwald a little more samantha fox uh molly ringwald main actress leading actress in 16 candles samantha fox wrote the single touch me i want your body 1986 so kind of interesting also produced by neil avron we've mentioned that before the goat of recording the best pop punk acts of this of this era big movie fans oh yeah i yeah, mean well, you talk a lot about of wes Bra- anderson references and stuff too right yeah yeah we talked about them and brand new and some other bands basically growing up with the same shit we did and um i think they were a little more 80s a little more gen x than we are Fall Out boy that is but right. um i guess learning more about the band as you do this show everything like that knowing how much they seem to love movies naming their band after a like a off like a pretty deep cut simpsons reference and things like that like maybe it shouldn't shock us that their videos were so theatrical and that this was not in their arsenal and that the label was like yeah sure can all the other bands on our fucking thing be in it like, yeah, <laughs> you know it's like there maybe it shouldn't be shocking at all that this music video exists because they love movies and maybe they just love the theatrics of of all of it you know playing the part doing that side of, type of thing just in the vein of the song title itself, right? Just 80s right. movies, all that. Sh- yeah. Yeah. And stuff that, I mean, they've probably got what, 10 years on us. So a lot of that stuff I couldn't really relate to, but I love it. You know, there's a lot of bands who are closer to our age that have their own movie references and whatnot. So if nothing else, it's, it's inspired some, some movie views that uh, maybe wouldn't have happened otherwise. So like really interesting all the super long song titles, references of other things. But the song itself is basically describing a a guy that stood up a date and he's feeling really bummed out because he already knows the girl's out of his league. He did it again. You're just the girl all the boys want to dance with. And I'm just the boy who has too many chances and um, begging for forgiveness. I'm sleeping on your folks porch again, dreaming. She said, why don't you just drop dead? And um, I think it's, it's interesting that the, the video doesn't portray anything related to the lyrics. You know, we talk about sometimes it's like way too literal. Other times there's no reference to the lyrics and also no story. I think, I think there's a fun thing of like not referencing the lyrics and just having a very intense story, just its own separate thing. And we see, yeah, we start seeing a lot more story at this point. So Patrick's yeah. Yeah. Uh, we first see the unraveling. I've watched him change drinking the smoothie, trying to like tamp down the, what did you say? Vampiristic <laughs> tendencies or something. <laughs> and um, the teeth he uses are just are so big. <laughs> there's yeah. a camping. Like you, you talk about eighties movies being referenced. Like there's an over the topness to, you know, I was, I'm not, we're not big horror movie people, but like I was watching a couple Halloweens on cable recently and uh my wife is like man yeah i really don't see you watch watching horror movies that often i'm like i'm not really like dying to re-watch hereditary or anything or even midsummer stuff that's like even black swan with the skin peeling stuff i just like no thank you <laughs> but there's something right. about jason Voorhees or michael myers where it's a little like this is an 80s campy thing like there's a formula to it it's fun you want to get into the halloween mood and everything i don't want to be like have my sleep be tortured for the next several months. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like most horror movies tend to do, but um, I guess I'm glad they chose um, <laughs> a set of fake teeth for Pete that were just almost hanging past his chin. <laughs> like just <laughs> super, like this is, it's super clear. Like this is going to be as over the top as you hoped for. And it's going to be a lot of fun for almost like a full 10 minutes. I guess maybe five minutes is more, maybe more accurate, but yeah, well, you know, we do have a reference to the lyrics. So into the chorus, kiss her, kiss her. And the the music just fades out. You know, I talk a lot about not wanting sound effects in my music videos. This music video gets a massive pass. <laughs> this is the, it's not even about the song. You're like, hey, wow, that, that song earned a music video. It's like, well, yes and no. <laughs> um, there's nothing about this video that helps or aids the song in any way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like... We talked about waking me up when September ends. Like, there's that big dramatic scene, and then <laughs> Trey Cool comes in with the doom, doom, ch, doom, doom. Ch. It's yeah, like, yeah. This is very much in step with <laughs> what the song tries to accomplish emotionally. Yeah, yeah. This is like 
The song's just kind of there, but it's really just a short film about vampires and shit. <laughs> so like, <laughs> but like you said, as much as you want to be bugged by it because you love that album and every song on it, it's like, no, nah, I'm having fun. Travis McCoy is involved. It's all good. Man. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I can't even remember. You know, it's like Little S16. It could have been any of the like any of the songs on Cork Tree, and it would have been a lot of fun. Right, right. But we see Pete Wentz. There's a there's a girl being held hostage, and all of his vamp cronies, <laughs> I don't know, or like <laughs> kiss her, kiss her, take the bite, take the bite, and Pete. Yeah, which ties into the lyric, like you said. Right, right. Which is nice, nice little element. Kiss there. her, kiss her, kiss right. her. So he's turning. And the whole community kind of knows that the vamps and everything and the people, uh, and they're trying to take advantage of his conflict, his internal conflict, right? They're trying to get him to basically turn this young lady into a vampire. And he doesn't. He instead bites the guy trying to push him into her and then just whoops the shit out of everyone. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> like, not to go full fanboy about Pete Wentz and everything, but like, it there does take a certain amount of like, to shoulder the weight of 2000s popularity for an entire band. Like there's those, I don't know if it's Photoshopped, but there's that weird internet thing that pops up where it was just like an old people magazine teaser on the cover. Where it was like Gerard and Mariah's steamy weekend. And I think it's fake, <laughs> but it's just like speaks to how like into the pop culture, I guess emo was. Do you ever see that? It's like a weird Photoshop picture of Mariah Carey and Gerard way. What? And I guess it might be real, but it's probably not, but it's like, yeah, Gerard and Mariah's secret text rendezvous or some <laughs> like that. But <laughs> as you Google, whether that's real or not, you know, credit to Pete, I guess a scotch for, um, shouldering the weight of Fall Out Boy's popularity at the time, which was very much mainstream by that point. I think we, we've noted before on the show that the second half of the decade lent itself to more platinum albums, more record sales, our fake corporate uh, overlord Hot Topic CEO <laughs> slash uh, record exec was was pleased with the output by by this point of the decade. And he did not give a f about Chris Carabas' uh, <laughs> life at all, unfortunately, because he's a very talented yeah. artist. Yeah. Oh, my God. But yeah, so he bites the guy, conflict, Patrick Stump's fucking journaling the whole way. Um, and yeah, he's just whooping ass. It's super almost West Side Story ish at this point because they're, they're, they they're kind of spend the rest of the video on this street in that moment, right? Yeah. And Patrick Stump is like reviewing like documented videos on a, what was it, Edge? No, Amped Mobile cell phone. Like almost like they may have sponsored the video, maybe taking a page out of Avril Lavigne's book of always having Nokia phones and weird camcorders and all of her music videos. Hard to see past that one. I guess this was around the time when cell phone empires were being built, right? I guess. So <laughs> right, like, right. We got to get this the music videos pronto, but I do love seeing the old version, like the NVs and shit like that, that are yeah. just like super unrealistic flip full keyboard things that... Um, <laughs> I actually thought it were nice, but hell yeah. What's cool is we still do it's still technically a music video before we get into the final like clockwork orange meets, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> In past follow-up music videos, we've talked about Pete's and every, their other guitarists, the way they perform, their spin, oh, yeah. you know, Param <laughs> Paramore yeah, has dude. their flips and everything. But they play into their own yes. thing. Yeah. Just a couple albums in, but it's like all their shit, but with vampire powers. <laughs> so like <laughs> Pete's literally bouncing off the fucking walls, just going Doing nuts, backlit. spinning fast as shit. Oh my God. My favorite one is he does the spin like he usually does, but he just starts levitating like 30 feet in the air. <laughs> <laughs> like, At one point, he's just jumping down. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's just, it's so clear that they're just like kind of taking the piss out of themselves at that point. But it makes me love them so much more. Oh like, my god! Hey yeah. Pete, you want to do that spin you're famous for and just fly through the fucking ceiling? Yeah. <laughs> what would happen if you actually could jump thirty feet in the air? And then they do it. They do it, and they play into it. It's it's just delightful. Back honestly. flipping off the pillars and stuff. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. It really. You know, it's I I tried to find the IMDb page, and all I could really find was like the band as themselves, which makes me think. Did he have a stunt double <laughs> or is Pete Wentz like learning Jeet Kune Do and backflipping <laughs> off of cables and stuff? <laughs> Either way, man, I, I'm falling in love with Pete Wentz like today yeah. in, in real time. <laughs> yeah. All over again. Deja vu all over again. Um, what's not to love? Okay. Uh, 
Oh, sh it's a showdown is my note here, which must mean we are at the point of the video where he there's yelling, kiss her, kiss her. Um, you know, big internal conflict for Pete, as we mentioned, setting this all up. The Academy is, are the first to reveal themselves fresh off of, I'm sure, or right before, I'm sure, the release of, what's that album? Help me out here, Tom. Oh, God. <laughs> Didn't we do an episode the one, on the album? The, the done with, the one, no, we haven't yet, I don't think. The one was slow down on it. Yeah. Um, almost, almost here? Oh, no. my God. People are going to fucking fire us from this job. <laughs> We work for the people and the people are going to fire us. Frantic Googling. Furiously frantic. typing. Yeah, almost here. I okay, I got <laughs> almost it. Here. Almost oh, here. Thank God. Yeah, you got it. We knew it all along. <laughs> Never a doubt, folks. <laughs> uh, enter the first bowler hat we see. Oh. And I only know the term bowler hat from that movie, um, Meet the Robinsons, which is a very underrated uh, animated <laughs> movie from the 2000s. The dinosaur, big head, little arms, etc. Anyway, Academy is comes in. Kind of a clockwork orange vibe, maybe not so much. Uh, but the Academy is lead singer is kind of like the leader of the we fucking hate Pete club, it seems. <laughs> right. I don't know if he's a vampire himself. I, I think they are. He's I think it's a the mystical point. creature they're all, of sorts. They're all vampires, and Pete Wentz is out to like seek revenge on the people that turned him into a vampire. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, I think he might be the one that, that done bit him. There you go. The t the choreography that kind of ensues, I think, is just a delight, like most Hilarious. of the things in this video. Yeah. Spooky, funny, campy, <laughs> fighty, punchy, kicky, jumpy, spinny. Yeah. Um, but they start tail. like taking a couple steps, and there's like credit to the audio person, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like the sound of the shoes on the pavement is so uh, noticeable. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the rival gang backs up as many steps in the same direction. And, you know, they kind of do a little cat and mouse thing for a bit. Right. Um, and then essentially the entire Fueled by Ramen catalog beats the f out of each other for the next like two minutes. <laughs> Brendan Urie is out here hypnotizing women and also in a bowler hat for no reason, apparently. There's something that blows my mind going back to 2005 Brendan Urie wasn't even in the center in any of these shots. He's like off to the side in the background. Like no one knew that in Ooh. just 10 years time, he would be the king of pop. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. If you listen to the show, you know what that's a reference to. But, but no, he's, he's, is he the biggest artist in this video today? Right? Like, is, is it funny well, to think that Academy is singer got center stage over Brendan Urie? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He had a good album recently, but you got to remember Fall Out Boy is at this point a borderline legacy act because they, Weezer and Green Day, were about to go on the fucking Hell Omega tour and try to mimic all these like stadium 80s metal acts. Like we're big enough to just pull stadiums worldwide <laughs> and go on this massive tour. So I think Fall Out Boy, similar to acting the part when they first got on the scene, are acting the part of the giant band they've kind of become and written songs or movies, this and that, you right. know, just like acting as if they were, I guess, Gen Y's, not, <laughs> I'm going to butcher this, Gen Y's ACDC or some <laughs> or something, you know what I mean? Like, just like, hey, we are those dudes of this moment in time kind of acting like that. I think that Hell Megator was like ambitious in the sense that like, oh, you, you three are just claiming that now. And it's like, I guess you're not wrong, but it's kind of like, damn, we're going to have weird fe farewell tour shit like this for the next we're all still pretty young guys why don't you put out a few more albums maybe but i you know i think acdc is a fair enough comparison because i remember going to hockey games as a kid and like they always played acdc in between periods or whatever and now fallout boy is getting so much airplay on like nfl commercials and remember me for centuries that big hero six song gets played yeah. a lot which kind of sucks because take this to your grave and from under the cork tree are so sacred freshman and sophomore albums that it's like, oh, no, don't do this. Don't I, become this. You I know? hate hearing that. But what do you want them to man. fade into obscurity? You want the artists you love to get fucking paid. You know I what know. I mean? That's the new, it's really with hard. the new Spotify models and everything. It's like, no, get your fucking money. We love you guys. Thanks for all the art. I know we kind of took Green Day. We didn't even take them to task. The Wake Me Up <laughs> with September Ends video is kind of a silly endeavor because of how intense it had to be inherently. Right. It's like we love them so much. Make your money. You guys are great. You brought me so much joy in my life. We love you so much. Get paid for sure. Anyway, they've acted the part every step of the way, I think is what I'm trying to say, which is kind of interesting about them. I guess Gumption can uh, 
take you a long way, uh, I suppose. All right, everybody, I want to give a quick shout out to our Council of Elders. These are our Patreon supporters at the highest tier, the Emo Elder. We've got Andre Provost, we've got Johnny Leftwich of the Steve Johnson's Happy Hour podcast, and we've got newly this week, Jason Carey. Guys, thank you all so much for supporting the show, and thank you to absolutely every single person in our Patreon. We recently put out our AMA video. It's like a 20-minute video of Pat and I answering all of your questions, and as soon as I get moved to North Carolina, Pat and I are going to meet up in the woods in a cabin. We're going to do another one of those. We're going to record two podcasts in person, and we're going to be putting a lot of stuff in the Patreon specifically for you guys as a thank you for supporting this show. If you'd like to join our Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash reminiscent. Check out all the cool things that we're offering. And I want to announce Patrick McDonough, you are the winner of our listener submitted song entry to the song of the week monthly playlist everything about that sentence is confusing but we'll hit you up on twitter uh, about what song you want to see on our songs of the week and not specific to patreon but a lot of you have contributed to like a 24 hour collaborative spotify playlist that i will be listening to on my drive across the country today as this song airs thank you all so much and thank you to the patreon supporters Really and truly, we love you all. Thank you so much. Back to the show. Anyway, there's a priest blessing the dead at, at some point. The, the, whole, the whole street <laughs> fight is definitely out of it. Here's a question. Do you think Fueled by Ramen thought the Academy is was going to be bigger than Panic at this moment in time based on the juxtaposition? Oh, I'm sure. Of the other acts in this video that aren't Fall Out Boy. I'm, I'm sure. They put him front That's and center a pretty on big every role. shot. Yeah. I mean, he was the supporting actor in this video, right? And it should have been Yuri, but they made it. How could you know? know? The thing is, how could you know? Here's this speaks to how well it's aged. We do this show, and this might speak to my how stupid I am, but I can very (laughs) easily recall the lead singer of Panic at the Disco's name. But I would have to Google the other. So you know what I mean? Like putting your money on the wrong horse, perhaps. Unless it was just for fun, I would have liked to see Travis McCoy a little bit more screen time there. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, the Academy has had that one really good album. I don't want to disrespect them too much before we do the episode. I don't want to get that episode's worth of flack for this. I'll wait until we do episode more episodes on them, I guess, to <laughs> have people hate hate my Academy's opinions, which it's, are generally uh, positive. It's Beckett or something, right? But uh, singer of Academy is, last name? That would not shock me. <laughs> at all <laughs> anyway his name is beckett okay so he brought me a lot of joy as well so i'm not gonna make fun of that name <laughs> names are silly my middle name's harlan what is time it's a flat circle we're all gonna die so why waste our time with right. that type of thing one thing i do super want to talk about is when okay having never seen a vampire movie i've seen enough ads and memes and shit to kind of get that they they have a very specific type of hair and I think it's hilarious that all the vamps in this music video had the specific vampire hair without having to grow it out or even style it differently. They just have vampire hair like in real life. (laughs) I just the hair in this video. It's under the bowler hats. It's perfect. And I love that. It's like. It's lighthearted without actively making fun of themselves in the moment it's like endearing serious how, enough to be cool yes but funny enough to be fun right it's the perfect balance very well done video. do you think do you think emo lent itself to a halloweeny el- elongated music video everyone's already got black hair jet black hair <laughs> you know what i mean like Hey, we're going to take this one a little darker, a little vampire, a little nighttime fighting. It's like, no, we're all dressed immediately for that part. Like (laughs) the label was probably like, oh, we don't have to spend money on for this. Everyone's already dressed like a vampire. So this, (laughs) anyway, anyway, if it was a different genre, I imagine like people would have had to maybe undergo a few more changes, but everyone was pretty much already dressing, uh, vampiristic. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Uh, stump gets bit. Stump gets bit at some point uh, in this video, which is sad to see. He was just journaling, journaling for science, watching Pete's transition or lack thereof, uh, fighting the fighting the urge. Um, 
Meanwhile, uh, let's talk about the end. Let's talk about the end of the video. A lot of fighting, a lot of punching, a lot of whoosh, you know, a lot of that action going <laughs> right, on. Right. You want to do that sound with me real quick? Whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> that last one was bad. Pow. Was okay. Yes. Yeah, that was a good one. You got to mix it up a little. <laughs> oh, nice. Whoa, like uh, someone threw a throwing star and it like hit, you know, you like. Oh, uh, I was thinking more of a ricochet. No, that's what I'm saying. It's ricocheting right by your ear. Like, oh, uh-huh. that, that almost hit me. <laughs> oh, I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Do we, have to... <laughs> Do we have to stop? Okay. Uh... Okay. Um Pete has has had a bulletproof vest on this whole time, <laughs> but it's like made of and, felt uh, or foam or something. Uh, just, I'm sure it's garlicky or some. Shit. Uh, anyway, the Academy is guy who was chosen to be the antag- main antagonist, sipping tea, watching it all go down. His minions are doing the fighting, but Pete wants him. He's like, I want a piece of the fucking Academy is guy. So Pete fights through an uncanny amount of individuals with his superpowers and jumping ability and spinning ability. And he scratches and claws literally to get to this man. And the Academy is guy just a fucking peers. Uh, but you don't yeah. see a bat fly away, I don't think. He's just kind of like, okay, this dude's on to some next level of vampiristic tendencies because that was <laughs> fucking crazy. Uh, so Pete's just on the squad car. He's in the squad car. He gets arrested. The cops are able to detain vampires, which is kind of a plot hole. But, um, <laughs> you know... You know, he sees a woman because, of course, I guess there was supposed to be a little interest at some point here, but with Pete, uh, classic Pete, am I right? <laughs> but, um, you know, the Academy, is guy is just yucking it up with the local officials, you know, probably putting, you know, grease in the wheels. You know what I'm saying? He knows some people. What can you do? <laughs> but uh, my my last note here, <laughs> yeah, I'm just seeing your note. I won't steal the line. <laughs> uh, my big my big takeaway here is make this movie, damn it. I would, right. I would watch this in a f- you know, yeah, I'd watch it. Underworld was fine, but also was it? I don't know. Give me, give me three of these. Stat. So it took me a minute to realize that the police were also vampires. So oh my, it was an inside job. God. <laughs> if you the the cops in the front seat look back and they've got the the spiky teeth, I think mm. this might be one of the biggest A cab music videos ever made. <laughs> You know what happened just now, Tom? We're a political pod. <laughs> no, what happened? Yeah, we always have been, always will be. Um, no, the thing, you, that realization just did this to my face. <laughs> I, got hit in the, <laughs> I got hit blindsided by that shit. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, they, um, they were vamps, dude. Vamps, dude. Vanderpump rules. Vamper pump. No, that didn't work. So, <laughs> Throw it out. Don't cut it from the show. But I've got I've got some fun facts. Very late in the game. Are you f-ing ready for this? We're finishing it out. Happy Halloween to everybody involved. <laughs> These are the Reese's cups of factoids coming at you. Music video director Alan Ferguson, also well known for the Great Escape by Boys Like Girls. Mm. How did he get one video so right? And one so wrong. Did it come down to budget? Hmm. Did it come down to theatrical Mom's tendencies spaghetti. from, hey, from man. Fall Out Boy themselves? Mom spaghetti, first of all. Second of all, <laughs> uh, no disrespect. Someone got all mad at us for talking shit on All Time Low. It's like, they're a good band. They're not a groundbreaking band. I mean, there's a reason Fall Out Boy is Fall Out Boy and Boys Like Girls is Boys Like Girls. No disrespect. No disrespect. No, I love that album, man. It's just like it is but what it is. The music Spaghetti. video was a little weak. I'm I'm shocked that it was yeah. the same director. Maybe it doesn't what, mean the same what, writer, what, but you know. What teen thing was represented in the Boys Like Girls Great Escape music video? Again, we love it. Love those guys. A lot of joy. That music video is fine. The song's great. It's all fun. But it's like, everyone's just very well behaved in that video. Right. They bring sweaters because it's chilly. It's like, this is fucking <laughs> lame as shit. It's not lame. It's great. But no one's escaping anywhere. In this video, it's like, I don't know. Do you have the the cojones to make a music video that doesn't promote the song at all? <laughs> I guess there'd be a certain amount of a certain amount of fame that would allow you to have that freedom. But Yeah. Uh, but this guy, he also goes by Sky Dalton. He is married to Beyonce's younger sister. 
Hmm. And he's done music videos for The Academy Is, Ashley Simpson, Beyonce, Boys Like Girls. Oh my God, he did the music video for Living Proof by Camila Cabello. Awesome. Hmm. Uh, he did... A lot of Fall Out Boy, a lot of gym class heroes, Jay-Z, Katy Perry. Okay. He did Hot and Cold, Lizzo, Good as Hell. Uh, he did a couple train cool. music videos, and he did Check I, Yes, Juliet by We the Kings. I would love to do that song very, very soon. It's coming up. Um, it is. Uh, and the thing about all that is um, <laughs> obviously very familiar with the Fueled by Ramen dudes. Uh, and this is kind of my maybe my closing thought, I guess, is – you know, hey, can we green light this? Yeah, it's a commercial for our entire label. So, you know, <laughs> right. it probably didn't cost a ton. You know, we're just going to have to buy some ropes to lift Pete in the air a few times, but uh, <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Uh, no, uh, yeah, overall, funny, sh- very great, good Halloween vibes without scaring my pants off too hard there. Um, you know, good stuff, very fun. Someday we'll do the cork tree episode, someday. But we don't. Uh, I don't know. It's too too sacred to to rush into. I don't. Yeah. I feel scared about it. It feels hard. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I I really enjoyed this one. I watched it maybe like ten times in a row. Again, I typically hate music videos that interrupt the music, but this one was done so well, and it was done with integrity, but also with enough humor to like also kind of make fun of itself a little bit it's like the best example of what a music video could be with a band that's willing to be a little theatrical. You got a little bit of money behind it and a director that clearly knows what the fuck he's doing. Really, really good one. I might, I, I think I definitely like it more than sugar. We're going down. Probably one of the most fun times I've had watching a video for the show in a very long time. Yeah, no, I I have been peppering your inbox with this video for almost a full calendar year. Like, so I'm glad. <laughs> well, well, I'm you were like, we I think for it's how... for like some B side. So I was like, how how good is a music video well, for a B side I mean, going to be? I'm like, Sixteen Candles. <laughs> That's a big one, dude. <laughs> when I say B side, it's literally because it's on the back half of the album. I'm okay. not saying <laughs> okay, that. Okay. I'm not trying to. We're not doing that episode yet, Tom. I won't let you suck me into this. I'm not trying to rank the songs. It just literally appears on the album later than some of the other okay only chronologically speaking is it a b-side but okay uh, yeah i'm about to tweet out can confirm a little less 16 candles a little more touch me music video episode will drop the friday before halloween and uh <laughs> a lot of time's gonna pass until that happens but uh, i'm excited about it already i wish it <laughs> i hope your move is going well i hope you're safe um i can't wait to have you in the same state for the first time since high school uh, that should be that should just be soul nourishing in a, in a new, very fun and cool way. Uh, I'm sure it will be. And I hope you all, wherever you are, are going to have a happy Halloween. Um, take some time to, I don't know, I'm going to tell you how to live your lives, but hopefully you've had fun listening to this because we had a f-ing super blast watching Pete jump around the walls and have <laughs> vampire powers with his spins because it, how could you not have fun with, yeah. with, with that? So uh, good stuff. Uh, thanks for being here. Tom, I love you. I love you all. Tweet us at underscore reminiscent FM, and I hope you have a very, very happy Halloween. Tweet us your favorite uh, Halloween candy. Mm. It's Reese's for me. Mm. I don't know if that's boring. I just think that's correct. Ooh, I really love a good Three Musketeers, but I think Reese's are definitely. Yeah. So for me, it's Reese's, and then the next tier is Milky Way, Three Musketeers, Snickers. Oh, dude, Milky Way. No. Sn- Snickers might be 1A. Snickers might be 1A. I, I, I meant to, I honestly meant to say Milky Ways rather than Three Musketeers. Mm. Milky Ways are one of my favorites. I love caramel so much. Um, but yeah, we might have to just buy our own candy and eat it in the car <laughs> this year. It's going to be a little sad, not only in a pandemic, but in a move. Um, but I hope everyone is having a happy and a safe Halloween. It's fun that it lands on a weekend. Of course, not that anyone can really go out and enjoy it, but I hope you're all having a fun, spooky night. Uh, Song of the week real quick, Inviolate by Grayscale off of 2019's Nella Vita. Can't get enough of it. It's a good uh, autumn, fall album for me. So didn't want to forget that because we almost did. <laughs> Give me Trouble by Death by Unga Bunga. Oh. I uh, was just browsing through the, you know, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff. Just trying to look, trying to be ready for these next couple of weeks. But if you listen to any of my song recommendations, uh, you'll know that they're all kind of 
you know, you know what I like at this point <laughs> if you if you follow any of that in any capacity. So, um, yeah, Trouble by Death by Unga Bunga. I'm not cool enough to be perusing uh, European bands. <laughs> this was definitely an Apple Music suggestion. So uh, that's what it is. But it's fun. Let's have some fun. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Love you all. All right. See you. Bye. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I personally would be really excited for Halloween, but I will be in a car driving 24 hours. If you'd like to check out the show notes for this episode, head over to reminiscentpodcast.com slash episode slash 195. You can find our Patreon at patreon.com slash reminiscent. And if you do nothing else, please hit us up on Twitter at underscore reminiscentfm. Let us know what you thought of this music video. We love you all. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.